On November 15, 1532, Pizarro's band of adventurers enters the Valley of Cajamarca. They've been told that Atahualpa is waiting for them here. But they're not prepared for the sight that greets them. In the hills beyond the town of Cajamarca is the Imperial Inca army, 80,000 men in full battle order. The conquistadors' own journals bear witness to their first impressions. Their camp looked like a very beautiful city. We'd seen nothing like it in the Indies until then. And it scared us, because we were so few and so deep in this land. Pizarro sends a party of his best horsemen into the heart of the Inca camp. They are led by Captain de Soto. They are gambling that Atahualpa will allow them to pass through the camp unharmed and agree to meet them. Soto's visit had a very important psychological purpose. To intimidate the Inca in front of his people, challenging him with the horse. Atahualpa at first didn't react to Soto's presence, as if nobody had entered the room. Once the, the horse comes eye to eye with the Inca, the Inca is still calm, showing that the horse has no impact on him, calling Soto's bluff. The captain advanced so close that the horse's nostrils disturbed the fringe on the Inca's forehead. But the Inca never moved. And then, after a brief silence, comes Atahualpa's explosion. He was telling them, the time has come for you to pay. I understand this as the time has come for you to pay with your lives. Soto, I understand, was uh, nervous enough to come back with fear to the uh, camp. And as we know, the Spaniards spent the night before in extreme fear. The conquistadors have made their camp in the town of Cajamarca. Many of them are now convinced they are facing oblivion. 168 soldiers, a thousand miles from any other Spaniard, facing an army of 80,000 Incas. Few of us slept that night. We kept watch in the square, from where we could see the campfires of the Indian army. It was a fearful sight, like a brilliantly star-studded night. Pizarro and his most trusted officers debate their options for how to deal with Atahualpa. Some advise caution, but Pizarro insists their best chance is to launch a surprise attack the next day. It's a tactic that's worked successfully in the past. The people of the Andes were chronically isolated, without access to writing or almost any other innovation from elsewhere in the Americas. By contrast, Pizarro and his men were geographically blessed. As Spaniards, 
they enjoyed the benefit of technologies and ideas that had spread easily across Eurasia. The events of 1532 were clearly influenced by deep causes over which no individual Spaniard or Inca had any control. The shape of the continents, the distribution of plants and animals, the spread of Eurasian technology. These were facts of geography. And at almost every turn of the drama, geography was tilted in favor of Europeans. It's the morning of November 16, 1532. Atahualpa has agreed to meet the Spaniards in the town of Cajamarca and sends his entourage ahead of him. But he makes a fateful decision that his soldiers should not carry weapons. The Indians were musicians and dancers. They were soldiers but unarmed. Why would Atahualpa unarm his own soldiers? Why? Because he was in the festivity. He was celebrating. He wasn't going to war. He was going for a celebration so that the whole people could see how the alleged gods would run away in fear. The fact that some people believed that the Spaniards were gods would play better in the hands of Atahualpa's uh, purpose. If I know they are not gods and I defeat the gods, then of course everybody will be with me. But what if I defeat the gods with no show of force at all? Then I am beyond the gods. While Atahualpa and his men enter Cajamarca, the Spaniards are waiting, hidden from view. There were five or six thousand men, and behind them, the figure of Atahualpa seated on a very fine litter, lined with feathers and embellished with gold and silver. Many of us pissed ourselves out of sheer terror. The square is filled with Atahualpa's people, but there's, there's not one Spaniard at sight. Atahualpa asks, where are these dogs? One of his uh, right hands answers, they have run away because they are afraid of the magnificent Inca. Of course, the whole crowd listened to this and believed that this was the case. Me presento ante vosotros en nombre de la cristiandad. Pizarro sends out his priest to confront Atahualpa. Para enseñaros el camino de la verdad. The conquistadors are obliged to try and convert native people before any resort to violence. Atahualpa has never seen a book before. He doesn't know what to do with it. 
imankay manang imapas chukeka manang rimas kay kikay pikanchu ¿Cómo te atreves, indio perro? ¡Salgan, españoles! ¡Destruyen a estos perros que no respetan las cosas de Dios! ¡Santiago, a ellos! At that moment, with the crowd absolutely unprepared, the horses come. There was massive panic. Just imagine the scene in Cayamarca. The Incas hadn't seen horses before. And these aren't ordinary horses. These are Spanish horses. Fierce, big, fighting horses. They could get in amongst men. They would trample men and they made the most excellent platform. From the horse, you could stab down to the left, stab down to the right. You could cut, you could scythe, hacking all about you. If only the Incas had known that what you had to do against cavalry was stand firm, then they'd have been all right. They had superior numbers, but they didn't know that. They fled, they broke ranks, and then the horsemen could get in amongst them, and they cut them down. There was an Inca god called Viracocha, and he was a white man and he was the god of thunder. And they thought these men with their arquebuses were the very incarnation of Viracocha. The Inca force was in his litter, helped by his carriers. As soon as they were able to do it, the Spaniards went after the litter and they started killing the carriers. One carrier would fall and another one would replace him. <laughs> Only at the very, very, very end of the tragedy, st the litter started to move because there were no more carriers left. As the litter falls, Pizarro himself captures Atahualpa. His plan has worked to perfection. After the initial shock of his capture, Atahualpa became a cooperative prisoner. He learned to speak Spanish and play chess with his captors. The Spaniards realized he was more useful to them alive than dead. He was allowed to re-establish his court in prison as long as he ordered his people to accept Spanish rule. He also ordered them to melt down a vast amount of treasure. Pizarro had promised Atahualpa his freedom in return for the gold. It proved to be an empty promise. Having handed over 20 tons of gold and silver, Atahualpa was no longer useful to his captors. He was garroted to death in the same square where so many of his followers had been slaughtered eight months earlier. With Atahualpa dead, the conquistadors went on to colonize the rest of Peru relying on the power of their guns, germs, and steel 